put his hand on and said, you got the responsibility of under shepherding my sheep. He said, it's your responsibility, watch this now, to create an environment of sound doctrine. Somebody say sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why did he do it? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Say, for the work of ministry. Work of ministry. Say, that means ministry work will go on and on and on and on. And on, and on, and on, and on to Jesus come back. Yes, that means the brick and mortar church will still be here. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. Now I'm not talking about the ecclesia, each individual called out body of Christ, member. I'm talking about now the collective organization of a living organization of a body of people that come and meet in a building, glory to God, and sanctified under God and our gifts and our talents and our abilities begin to connect and touch each other and then a synergy begin to happen and your gift hit my gift and my gift hit your gift and then she get healed and he get made whole and she get blessed. Somebody give God praise. We come together to make that happen in the church. Look at 2 Peter 3.15. I'm talking to pastors now, leaders now, ministers now, deacons now. I'm even talking to deacons that don't show up for special events. Hashtag show up. <laughs> Hashtag show up. If the environment is created, you know, a flower can't just decide to jump out the pot and go anywhere in your house. No, It'll die. <laughs> if you're around there thirsty, if you're around there hungry and thirsty, I'm like, oh, you got something for me to eat or drink around here. Amen. They got to stay in the environment that's conducive for growth. Amen. Where I tell you to go? Second Peter 3.15. Hallelujah. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you. Praise God for salvation. Say God want people saved. Come on, say it. Now look at First Peter three fifteen. God wants people saved. That's our responsibility to reach them for the Lord. Your amens got low. Come on, say hallelujah. hallelujah. First Peter. Oh, wait, wait. Let me see here. And I can, okay, yes, 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 okay. Hallelujah. First Peter now. Come on. Glory to God. Amen. Let's give our young men a hand praise tonight. They, they're not normally there. Brother Chad is in Vietnam. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then uh, Deacon Rodney is working, so they're making it work for us. So, amen. Well, uh, we don't work. Okay, he got it. All right. He said, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always, watch this, to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. He said, so be ready to give an answer. Say that sound teaching and sound doctrine. Look at 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Come on now. 1 Timothy 6 and 12. I'm making my third point. And that point is, it is the responsibility of the five-fold ministry gift to feed the believers with sound doctrine so that the believers will have the right environment to grow. Amen. It's the believer's responsibility to do what? Add to your faith. Make yourself available so that you can grow. Amen. 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 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Say faith is always a good fight. Because it's a fixed fight. Say every time I stand in faith, I win. Come on, say every time I face any situation in faith, it's already done. You remember now. God called David to fight the giant. Watch this. The giant was already a defeated foe in God's eye. 
but he looked throughout all of Israel and none of Israel was ready to fight. He asked, is there any man that would come out on behalf of Israel and face the giant? David stood up as a ruddy child and said, I'll face him. Amen. How many of you know that God can win the battle, but you got to show up for the fight? Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. You got to show up. So it took David to get that five smooth stones and had one stone and threw it. Then the power of God backed it. Amen. And he killed the giant. Amen. And so God is looking for you to stand in faith so that you can win the fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of on eternal life, or the Zoe life that translates to, whereunto thou art also called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Say, I got to fight the good fight of faith. Now, point number four as we move. Look at James chapter one now, verse one through five in the Amplified Bible. I'm turning up field now, praise God. I'm turning up field, praise God. James chapter 1, verses 1 through 5 in the Amplified Bible now. He says, James, a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 Hebrew tribes scattered abroad among the Gentiles in the dispersion, greetings, rejoice. Consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you fall into various trials. Hold up right there. One translation says temptations, tests, and trials. He said, count it all what? Joy. How many of you got joy tonight? Joy. How many of you facing any situations tonight? But you still got your joy. Somebody give God a shout of praise if you still got your joy. Online, throw the emoji of hand praise up if you still got your joy. See, see what we fail to realize is that sometimes as Christians, we're looking for utopia in a world that never was promised you utopia. Yeah. He said there'll be good moments and good times, but he also said there'll be tests and trials. Yeah. Anybody been through anything? Yeah. Because the first thing we think when we're going through something, what did I do wrong? Or if I didn't do anything wrong, watch this, why is God mad at me? No, there's a devil. Come on, say amen. We live in a fallen world. Here's why faith is so important. Because God wants you to know tonight, no matter what the test is, no matter what the trial is, God, watch this, has given you the ability to defeat every test and trial if you would stand in faith, watch this, and keep praising God in the midst of every circumstance and situation. Anybody still got your praise? Glory to God. Listen now. Consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters. When you fall into various trials, watch verse 3 now. Be assured that the testing of your faith, say the testing of your faith. Can I shock y'all tonight? Buckle, buckle your spiritual seat belts up. I'm going to drop something on you now. I'm gonna just buckle your seat belts up, amen. Buckle your seat belts up, amen. Watch this, watch this now. What if I told you God allowed your faith to be tested? No, I'm going to have to prove that. You just thought the devil showed up out of anywhere, didn't you? Huh? Listen, you thought the devil just showed up, and, and watch this. He had full reign to do whatever he wanted to do to you, right? No, no, God said, I will allow you to test this one because I know what I got in this one, glory to God. And even in the midst of this, they still going to give me glory, and it won't take them out. I wish I had five witnesses that'll give God praise, glory to God, out there in social media land. Uh, I've been through some things, but I'm still standing on the word of God. Anybody still standing, glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Nothing catches God by surprise. Watch this now. Be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. Say, I'm being matured through this. <laughs> I'm being matured through this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of you, glory to God, you got doctor degrees. You've been through so much. Say amen to this. You a doctor. You need to just put doc on your name. Amen. Hey, look. <laughs> Dr. Simpson's name, he started out being Pastor Lee Simpson. 
After a few years, he turned into Dr. Lee Simpson. Somebody say amen. Why? <laughs> something is happening when you go through something and you're able to stand in faith and still lift your hands up and say, Jesus, my God, I still love you. Somebody throw your hands in the air. Throw your head back and say, God, I still love you, Lord. I still love you. Oh, I feel it now. And let endurance have its perfect result and do a thorough work so that you may be perfect and completely developed in your faith, lacking nothing. Say, this is faith development. Say, I'm working out now. Come on, say, I'm working out now. Some of you are getting ready to get in the gym of faith. <laughs> Woo, I hear that by the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You coming out of here like Hercules, man. Built up in the spirit. Glory to God. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Let's go on now. Write this down. Faith has to be tested in order for it to be trusted. Faith has to be tested in order for it to be trusted. Now, I want to give you five areas of faith, or not, not of faith. I want to give you five times or situations that God will allow faith to be tested. The very first time we see faith being tested is in the Garden of Eden. God created a garden. He put everything in the garden that man would ever need. He even brought, watch this, man a woman. Praise God, ain't God good. Somebody hashtag God is good now. <laughs> he <laughs> Help me up here now, Lord. He, he brought man a woman. Praise God. And man and woman together would dominate by faith. But he said in order for man and woman to have dominion and dominate, he says faith that's not tested can't be trusted. Amen. I want to trust my son, but can he stand in faith? And so the first test was the test to see would Adam and Eve stand on God's word. One of the prophetic slogans of this ministry is we stand on the word of God. Why? Because the first faith test is will you stand on the word of God? And so God made the garden and he placed man, Adam and Eve in the garden, made he male and female. He placed them in the garden and said, I've given you faith so that you can dominate. But faith is not tested, can't be trusted. So God made two trees. He made the tree of life and he made the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He said, you can eat of any fruit in the garden, anything in the garden, but don't touch this one tree. I'm giving you my word and I need you to stand on my word. Don't touch this tree. Why not touch it, God? Why not? I don't need to tell you all that. I'm just telling you, do not touch it because in the day that you touch it, you shall surely die. He said, your faith got to be tested. Will you stand on my word? We don't know how much time elapsed, do we? We know the day to the Lord is as a thousand years, a thousand years is as one day. And we read the Bible and think two days later he'll come say, we don't know how many days it was. It was somewhere in that thousand year timeline though. So I believe Adam and Eve was walking in dominance and dominion for many years. And then here come the serpent. Here come Satan now. Coming in the cool of the, he coming in the garden now. It's slithering as a snake, the old serpent, the old devil, the old liar. Come on. He's coming now, the father of lies. He's coming in with trickery and wicker. He's coming in with twisted words. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And watch this. And he gave them the opposite word that God gave them. And God was saying, I can hear him echoing now, Adam, Eve, stand on my word. Hallelujah. But they didn't. They listened to him. They failed the fa first faith test. Watch this now. Whenever you have situations where the devil will come and try to pull that word from you. You know, the Bible talks about when you get a word, immediately Satan comes to take what was sown. He, he going to try to meet you tonight before you leave. The I'm letting you know right now. He going to try to meet you. Somebody going to call you. Somebody going to say something as they passing out the chicken wings. Amen. And the meat in the back. You going to get mad. Somebody cut in front of you. Sister Rhonda told you you couldn't have three chicken wings. Come on, somebody. He <laughs> Somebody cut you off in the parking lot. Cut you off. 
<laughs> Amen. So, so you got to just stand on the word. Be ready. Malik said, I be rebuked that. I'm getting four chicken wings tonight. <laughs> All right, listen. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. So now they, pass, they fail the first test. Now notice now, Adam, God sends the second Adam, which is Jesus. Y'all know the story, right? In the four gospels, right? Three synoptic in the other gospel. And he comes and he has the same test as a man. But when Satan comes now to tempt him and to test his faith, he says, it is written. Somebody hashtag, it is written. Hallelujah. See, you can never say, get be, be behind me until you first stand on what's written. Amen. My God, man, I, this is a good Sunday morning. Now, I might have to rerun this tomorrow. Amen. Look, add a little more stuff around it. Amen. Listen, the first thing Jesus said when the serpent, serpent came was, it is written. Then get thee behind me. When you know what's written, you can demand that the enemy now get behind you because you're standing on the word, and the word has, watched this power to make him move. Somebody say amen to this. But the second test, and these are not, not in chronological order, all of them, I'm just going to give them to you, amen, for time's sake. God allows man to be tested to see if he would stand in faith through adversity. Sometimes God brought the adversity. He allowed the adversity to come. What is adversity? Adverse situation. <laughs> you've been standing, you've been sowing, you've been be believing for financial breakthrough. Come on. And you go to the job and there's a pink slip. You're laid off. go to the job, they got to cut your hours. Mm -hmm. You were loving your husband, being a good woman. You were loving your wife, being a good man, and here come adversity. Mm -hmm. You raised your children in the fear and ammunition of the Lord, and you prayed over them. You taught them the word. You had Bible study with them, and all that. Here come adversity. Adverse situation that seemed like the contrary to the word of God. God said, can you stand on my word in adversity? In adversity, somebody hashtag faith in adversity. Number three, God allows your faith to be tested to see if you'll stand in faith against pressure. This the big one here. Hunter neighbors say this the big one here. Pressure. Now I want to give you five categories of pressure that will come because of your faith. Number one, religious pressure. No devil like a religious devil. Come on, say amen. Jesus had, <laughs> Jesus was all right with sinners. It's when he got around the Pharisees and the Sadducees, amen, that he had his biggest battles. You got to be able to stand in faith against religious pressure. Hmm? People pressuring you. It don't take all that. Hmm? You always out to that church. Hmm? All you do for that church. Hmm? You just save your tithe, amen, and stop tithing and giving to that church. You'll be able to pay all your bills. Never said that before. You were going to every club on the strip, backing it down, shaking it, twisting it, come on, dropping it, picking it back up, party over here, party over there, four and five drinks, amen. Nobody ever told you to stop that. Oh, come on, clap your hands. I'll keep moving now. If you clap your hands, I'll keep going. I'll keep going. I'll keep going, Amen. Huh? You shopping all over the place. Ain't nobody say you shop too much or nothing like that, but you go to church too much. Huh? Did you see the shoes Pastor had on? Man, I mean, I mean, he wear a new pair of shoes every. <laughs> I wonder how many of my money. <laughs> That's five categories under. God will allow your faith to be tested in pressure. Number one, religious pressure. Number two, cultural pressure. Cultural pressure. What do you do when the culture is not doing what you know to do as a Christian? What do you do when you're around your friends, your homeboys, and your homegirls? Huh? Cultural pressure. What do you do when it's a cultural norm, but it's a biblical, it's against biblical uh, word, it's against God? What, what do you do then? I wonder what you've been liking on social media. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> 
something can be totally against God's word, but because of cultural pressure, you're not like, <laughs> and then come in, that's fine. You know that ain't fine. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Why are you liking that? Cultural pressure. Yeah. Come on, hunt your neighbor and say, stick with him now. <laughs> Watch this now, political pressure. Political pressure. I ain't going to touch on this one. Y'all throw rocks at me now. I, I'm, I'm smarter than that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> voting for stuff that God ain't voting on. Come on, say amen. I ain't got to. Y'all say amen to this now. Look straight ahead. Malik, you still with me? <laughs> you got my back, security? <laughs> security! Political pressure. Pop goes the weave. Just put the emoji of headed folks. Come on, put it on there. Drop it in the comments. Come on, somebody drop it. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> Just read your Bible <laughs> and find out are you under any kind of political pressure to vote against God. Come on. Come on. <laughs> all right, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> what about financial pressure? What about financial pressure? When your finances tell you you can't give anymore. When they tell you to cut God out, don't tithe, don't sow, don't give, because after all, that's going to get you out the hole, right? No, no, if you want anything supernatural to happen to your finances, you got to stand on that word. God told me if I tithe, he'll open the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing. I won't have room enough to receive. He'll rebuke the devourer for my name's sake. Can I give you a testimony, man? We had this call we used to call girl. 1993 Acro I mean, boy, we so deep in the 2000s, it wasn't funny. Girl smoked all over the place. Girl had a half a million miles on her when she went, listen, when the odometer stopped reading. But because we were tithers, come on, somebody, I drove girl to the junkyard, amen, still running, and gave it to one of the Mexican brothers. Somebody give God praise. She never broke down. The air condition stopped working, but she didn't break down. Oh, y'all, that's a funny praise, glory to God. I'm bragging on the Lord. I say he didn't give me a new car at that time, but he kept the one I had running, amen. Some of you are holding your washing machine up with a rubber band, glory to God. But it's still working. Give God praise in here, amen. You got all kind of gadgets and get it, but the thing's still working. Give God a real praise in here tonight. That's your tithe, rebuking the devourer for God's name's sake. He teaching you something in that. Teaching you how to appreciate what you have before you get something else. Say amen. Everybody know that work in any area in this ministry, man, we going to make it do what it do till it stop doing what it do. Listen, I had a, I had a new printer in the back. And by that, that printer we had, Donna, you remember that printer? Donna, she don't even want to remember that printer. I called it Shirt Shake a Lot. That thing dancing back there. Every time we use that thing, oh, hey, 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 hey. That thing was shaking out, Donna, man, I know we can do better than this, Pastor. I already had the new printer. I just wasn't going to break it out to that. It couldn't shake no more. I said, all right, let's <laughs> come on, say amen. <laughs> they come sending, you know, they come sending the work order up to me. You know, Pastor, we got that. That's your dream. We, we're going to make that happen. <laughs> Keep praying over it. Stand in, stand in faith for it. <laughs> come on. <laughs> so religious pressure, cultural pressure, political pressure, financial pressure, and then here's another one. Peer pressure, peer pressure. Can you stand in faith even in peer pressure? Oh, boy. Now look at your neighbor and say, I told you, I told you, he going to talk to you tonight. Come on, he going to say something to you tonight. So peer pressure. You have to be able to stand in faith even during peer pressure. When your peers 
appear to be doing something different, but you're still standing in faith. Hallelujah. If you want to dominate. Amen. I said if you want to dominate in the earth. Hallelujah. Let's give God a 15 second praise break for those that want to dominate. Come on online, throw the emoji of hand praise up. I said for those that want to dominate, give God a 15 second praise break. I hear God saying some of you have passed all the tests, now giving praise, glory to God. It's your time of elevation. It's your time for next level. It's your time to do what nobody can stop you from doing now. Watch this now. Glory to God. So faith has to be tested in order for it to be trusted. The first test was in Genesis. Adam and Eve, when the devil came, to test to stand on God's word. Number two, God allowed man to be tested to see if he would stand in faith through adversity. Number three, to see would he stand in faith against pressure, religious pressure, cultural pressure, political pressure, financial pressure, peer pressure. Number four, faith to stand even when facing danger. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. King said, I'm going to throw you in the fiery furnace, boy. You keep talking about the Lord. Anybody been in any kind of fiery furnace? My fiery furnace was the prison. I called it the big house. <laughs> Come on, say amen. For one year. And anybody that know me, man, y'all know how neat and clean I am. That was torture. I mean, God bet I'm like, I'm going to die in here. I was, calling, I was calling, calling my wife every day. I can't do this. I'm looking at the guy with the rifle trying to, I'm going to ride half but a year. You know, I'm going to run up and attack him and get away. But I kept losing in my mind. See it in mine, you'll see it in time. Thank God I kept losing that one, Doc. Every time I saw, I, I get in mind, I said, I'm going to run up on him and take the rifle. And I, I said, ooh, boy, he beat me. I said, let me sit down somewhere. Go on back to work. <laughs> but if I'd ever saw it in mine, I'd have tried him. <laughs> so listen to what I'm saying. Faith to stand even when facing danger. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego told him, said, Oh, king, even if our God don't deliver, I'm not bowing down to you. We're going to worship only God and serve God. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Hmm? Didn't Daniel do the same thing? The king told Daniel, whenever you hear the psaltery and the harp and the music and stuff, bow down and worship the image. And Daniel said, no, I ain't doing that. He went up in his house. He opened his windows wide. Now, you know, that's boldness. I said, Daniel, you didn't have to open your window and worship God. Amen. You could have did it in the comforts of your house. He said, no, I need everybody to see that I'm going to worship God even in a culture that's turning against God. Even when the world says it's dangerous to worship God, any believers in the house, give God praise. I'm going to worship God even when danger says I should turn my back on. Hallelujah. 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 Number five, faith to stand even if you have to stand against people that you love. Faith to stand Hallelujah. even if you have to stand against people that you love. We know Job loved his wife. But the book of Job record <laughs> that that was a day, praise God, that the devil was roaming around seeking to and fro whom he made the vow. And then God asked him a question. He said, uh, where are you coming from, Satan? He said, walking to and fro on the earth, seeking whom I made the vow. And God said, uh, have you considered my servant Job? Have you considered my servant Kurt? Have you considered my servant, put your name there. Watch this carefully. I said, God, why are you going to sit the devil on Job? Faith did not test it, cannot be trusted. He allows adverse situations. He allows your faith to be tested because he's maturing you. He's strengthening you. He's growing you. Because you got to understand the ultimate goal, praise God. God sees the ultimate goal. He sees what you're going to become. Glory to God. He sees your end from your beginning and all in between. He knows what it's going to take for you to be able to possess the house and keep the house. He knows what it takes for you to start the business and stay in the business and take it to the next 
God's level. So he will allow adversity and things to come that seem contrary to the word so that when you stand on the word, God will show you that. When you stand on the word, the next thing you'll do is dominate because of the word. Somebody give God praise. I'm standing on the word and I'm dominating on Here's why he said you got to get a different perception when you're going through stuff is how you perceive it. Job had the realization that God, watch this, is still on my side. He told the devil, he says, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to allow you to test Job. Now, the, the devil didn't know he was working. You know, he was employed by God. Y'all missed that. He said, I made you, I'm still going to use you. Didn't he tell Pharaoh the same thing? He said, Pharaoh, I know you're not going to obey me. You're not going to let the children of Israel go. He says, but I'm still going to use you anyway because I'll write the book and you'll be in the chariots chasing Moses and the children of Israel and I'll drown you in the sea and everybody will know what I did and give me the glory because they thought you was God, but you were just a lowercase g and I'm the big daddy God, glory to God. Hallelujah. I'll still use it for my glory. He said, I created you, say. He even says in the book of Ezekiel, he said, I made the smith that bloweth the coal. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, huh? He said, you was an anointed cherub when I created you. All the tablets and music was in your body. And you was beautiful. And until the day I found what? Pride. When you said, I will be like the most high God. And he cast him down. He says, I made you. I'll still use you, utilize you for my work. God wasn't caught off guard in the Garden of Eden. Are you kidding me? Jesus was slain before the foundation of the world. Listen, the provision for death and sin was already given before man ever sinned. Y'all missed that. He just allowed him to test him and see what he's standing on the word because watch this. God gave you free will so faith that's not tested can't be trusted. So God put you in, allow you to be in adverse situation so that you'll know what you're made of. You'll know what you need to develop in. You'll know what you need to add to your faith. Amen. See, you seem like a faith giant until you go through some adversity. Then you'll know what you got to add to it. Have you ever been saying something and say, oh, boy, I need, I need some patience. What you're really saying, I need to add patience to this faith. Hmm? Some of you stand strong for two years. Let that third year roll around. Though. That third year roll around. I say, let me see your prayer vigil. That thing done changed. <laughs> that thing done changed. You're a downsize. Hmm? I don't know. I'm matching on the hill. <laughs> After that third year, you come down, I just shift in it. I just give me, give me, a, give me a bridge. Give me a bridge with an umbrella, Lord. <laughs> Come on, hunt your neighbor, say he almost closed. Here it is. Let me give it to you. All right. Faith to stand even if you have to stand against people that you love. Sometimes you're going to have to stand against people that you love. The Bible even says it this way in the Gospels. Jesus said that in the last days, he said it would be father against son, mothers against daughters, brothers against brothers. Come on, see what I'm saying? In comparatively speaking to God, he's saying, will you be able to stand even against somebody that you love in faith? Amen. Give me a few more moments time. Oh, yeah. Hebrews chapter 10, 35 and 36, please. Hebrews chapter 10, 35, 36 in the uh, amplify. Let's just go to the Amplified. Amen for time's sake. Hebrews chapter 10, 35, 36. I got a couple more things. Do you want them? Yes, come on, give God a hand praise. Amen. Those of you that are online, give God a hand praise. Come on, come on. It's just two minutes after six. Georgia play at 730. Amen. We're going to eat a little bit, get home and watch the Bulldog. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which have great recompense of what? Reward. See, I'm getting ready to have a reward ceremony. Now, you know, it ain't no good to have a reward ceremony and don't nobody come. Now, one of the most embarrassing days of my life was my high school graduation. Let me tell you why. As a young man, I was classified as a genius. Am I right, Mama? They 
said my IQ was a genius. And uh, I didn't apply myself in school. You know, I found out how to barely get by. Some of you barely getting by. <laughs> yeah. Mike said that. I, I didn't let that get out. Mike said some of you barely getting by with your faith. Because <laughs> you're like Kurt, you just barely applying it. Come on, say amen. And so I just sat in there and I knew, you know, one class I ain't do nothing but slap clay on there. I, I never made a pottery. Every time she come by, I just slap clay. And, and when she look at me, I say, wedge in the clay. Wedge in the clay. And then she say, oh, wedge in the clay. 33 and a third. She never caught it. I never made it. You remember that, too? Miss Manuel, yeah. Every time she come by, I say, wedge in the clay. And so since I was speaking the language, she say, he wedge in the clay. Oh, Kirk, that's 33 and a third. I barely got by. So graduation day. Now, I'm classified a genius, right? Graduation day, I'm sitting in there. I see my friends, some of them got gold tassels everywhere. And I'm sitting there, barely got the robe on. My sweet mother out there, my Aunt Trail, she's not here tonight. She's right beside her, a few more aunts and uncles out there, and they shouting. Dad in the audience like that, and boy, they called my name. Kirk on, I scurried up there. They hand me the thing, I ease on down. And then one of my homeboys said, smoke one. I man, don't say that now. Got my folks in here. <laughs> Barely made it by. I wonder what would happen if you stopped barely getting by with your faith. And you start really taking your spiritual walk serious. I, I, I talked, Dr. Simpson and Pastor Pat and myself was talking, and we was talking about how there was a time when we were going to conferences, four days a week, three services or four services a day, and we couldn't wait to get in each one of them. Why? Because we were adding to our faith. We were being serious about our faith. We were being diligent about our faith because we wanted to grow because we realized it's not God's responsibility. It's not the pastor's responsibility. It's not eternal word responsibility. It's not faith clinic responsibility. It is the individual believer responsibility to take accountability and add to your faith the things that's necessary to take you to the next level. Somebody give God praise up in here. I'm preaching better than you shouting glory to God. Hallelujah. For you have need of patience. That's why he said add to your faith patience. He know you're going to need it. <laughs> Every faith battle you get in ain't going immediately. Hmm? Hmm? Just because you spoke to it last time and it immediately left don't mean it's going to work that way this time. That situation you've been speaking to, you about to give up. You better keep speaking to it. Yeah. Add to your faith what? Patience. For you have need of what? Patience. See, that's why he told you to add to your faith patience. I can't add patience to you, beloved. I can't add diligence. I can't add consistency. Come on, I can't tithe for you. I can't give for you. I can't sow for you. I can't come for you. Somebody say amen. Somebody say, you got to do it. I can make sure sound doctrine is given to you. That's my responsibility. Listen carefully. For you have need of patience that after you have done the what? Will of God. Say the will of God is the word of God and the word of God is the will of God. Come on, say it. The will of God is the word of God. The word of God is the will of God. Say it again. The will of God is the word of God. The word of God is the will of God. The word and the will of, is the will of God and the word is God and God all that is the will and the word. Say amen. You know, for you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Yes, yes. All right. Yes. Ephesians 6, 10 through 17, Amplified Bible. I'm closing now. I said I'm closing now. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him and in the power of his boundless might. Watch this carefully. Put on the full armor of God. Who has to put it on? God going to put it on you, ain't he? <laughs> you, you, you be out 
that you look you be out there getting tore up. Yeah. You have compassion on now. You say, boy, you sure is somebody pray for him. <laughs> somebody lift him up now. Hold hand, help them cross the street. They tore up now. The marriage tore up. Finances tore up. Yeah. Kirk gone over there and sold something to them. They're going to need some more help tomorrow. Yes, Put on the full armor of God, for his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armed soldier, so that you may be able to successfully what? Stand. stand. Somebody hashtag stand. stand. Say stand in faith stand. and dominate in earth. Dominate. Say stand in faith. And dominate in earth. Here it is. Put on the full armor of God, for his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armed soldier, so that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the devil. Next verse. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural places. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God. He keep telling you something. So that you will be, hey, I ain't got to do nothing. Put it on. I ain't got to do nothing. Pick it up and put it on. I ain't got to do nothing. Jesus done it all. Pick it up and put it on. I ain't got to do nothing. The Lord done, done everything. John 1930, it is finished atonement. Yes, sir. I paid the price for you to be saved. Yes. I paid the price for the atonement. But you pick up your cross and follow me. You put on the yes, armor of God. You add to your faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground. See, there it is again. Stand your ground. See, y'all thought Florida made that rule to stand your ground law. Stand your, y'all ain't, y'all with me? Stand your ground in the evil day. Say, that's this day. Yes, of danger and having done everything that the crisis demands to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, victorious. I'm going to keep standing till I get the victory. I'm going to keep standing until it yields. I'm going to keep standing until the increase comes. I'm going to keep standing until my children come home. I'm going to keep standing until the doctor report change. Glory to God. I'm going to keep standing. I'm going to keep standing after I've done all. I'm going to stand Y'all finish reading that. Finish reading that. Stand, stand. I'm closing. Please stand. Y'all finish reading that all the way to verse 17. I, I've done. First John 5, 1 through 4, e, EBR. Easy. What that is? E, what is that, Mike? EBR. What is it? Easy. Huh? I'm talking to the folks back there. What is it, Malik? E, no, no. It's supposed to be EBR, ain't it? Easy, easy, ERV then. I dread it. Find the EBR. <laughs> Here we go. All right, come on, Malik. Glory to God. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Somebody shout glory. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You getting ready to dominate, glory to God. You getting ready to dominate your situations and circumstances. Huh? You don't have it. Get it, get it, Mike. Okay. See that? That's ERV. Easy reading verse. What did I say? EBR. <laughs> Next time I'm right even when I'm wrong. <laughs> they told me, they told me if God says it's a pink elephant on the back wall, it's a pink elephant on the back wall. <laughs> All right. Let's close with this. The people who believe that Jesus, anybody believe in Jesus? Yes, I do. Is the Messiah. Yes. The Lord. Yes. Y'all gonna let anybody change that? No. Y'all gonna stand on that? Yes. If you're gonna stand on that, give God praise. You're standing on Jesus as the Lord. He is the Messiah. Yes. He is the anointed one. Yes. The people who believe that Jesus is the Messiah are God's children. Anyone who loves the Father, oh, that ain't what I'm looking for. Tell you, First John five one through four. Oh, I got to go some more then. Okay, All right, I knew that one. That ain't well. That ain't jumping off point. But that's getting to it. All right. How do we know that we love God's children? We know because we love God and we obey His commands. 
That's New Testament about them commands, ain't it? Remember I told y'all Sunday? It's Old Testament until you go out and do something wrong. When that judge hit that gauntlet after you done shot somebody, and he hit that gauntlet and say 15 years, mm, come on, that, 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 it's come back alive, doesn't it? Hmm? You go out and steal something and get caught, dice and not steal, that come back alive, doesn't it? Hmm? He wrote them on your heart. Took them off of stones, wrote them in your heart now. Loving God means obeying his commands. Boy, this New Testament, ain't it? <laughs> and God's commands are not too hard for us. Not now that you got the Holy Ghost. I said not now that you got the Holy Ghost. Because everyone who is a child of God has the power to win against the world. Hallelujah. Say, I've got the power. Got the power. Number five, I'm closing. Verse five, ain't it? that all I need? All right, that's all I want. That's it then. I wish I could have closed with a great crescendo, but y'all got the point. I want to pray for you. In order to be able to dominate in the earth, you got to first stand on God's word. We stand on the word. Somebody hashtag, I'm standing on this. I want to pray for those that are watching by, by way of social media. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, stretch your blessed hands toward me. I want to pray for you tonight. You, I feel I'm talking to someone right now. I'm talking to a person right now. You've gone through a terrible breakup. You're hurt. You're crying. But God want me to tell you that this too shall pass. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you have somebody just, child just got a sentence, and you don't know what to do. Just yesterday, the child received a five-year sentence. You, you're coming unglued. God told me to tell you to hold it together. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, stretch your hands toward me, even online. I want to pray with you, and I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I believe you are God. I believe you came from heaven. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you were buried. And on the third day, you rose again. Jesus, I'm a sinner and I have sinned. But tonight, this evening, I ask you to come into my heart, change my life, and be my Savior. If you said that prayer, we know you got born again. Amen. Why don't you hashtag in the comment section, I'm saved. Visit our website, www.ewmchurch.org. Let us know what happened to you. God bless you. We thank God for you. Tune in tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., amen, regular service, tomorrow evening, 4 p.m., for us to finish off our faith conference. God bless you. We love you, amen. Let's give our online viewing audience, E-Church, let's give them a hand praise tonight. Now, for those of you that are here, real quick, if you're not saved, raise your hand. As the praise thing sing, raise your hand. If you're not born again, raise your hand.